Hello and welcome back to the KCZ channel. I'm Rob and I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Today, we're jumping into some Pro Revenge Archives. Our first story today comes to us from Major Moron 0851. Be a jerk about fixing my car. Hope you and your manager enjoy unemployment thanks to my dumb luck. Let's jump right in. Okay, so few things to start. I'm sorry this is long, but it's a lot of information to lay out the story. I think the revenge is pretty sweet though. Secondly, English is my first language, but I never did well with grammar. Sorry. Okay, so the story. In January 2018, my best friend, his girlfriend and I all went out. We took my car, but I got drunk, so my best friend drove us home. As we were approaching a roundabout, a driver from a side street pulled out in front of us, then slammed on their brakes, causing my best friend to swerve and hit the concrete median with both driver side tires. We parked the car in a parking lot and Ubered home. Next day, I had the car towed to my personal mechanic shop, insurance guy assesses the damage, and my mechanic gets to work. He does everything he thought it needed putting it on the alignment rack and found out that the engine cradle had been bent in the impact and it needed a new one. He didn't have the capability to do this, so they sent my car to a different company, let's just call it ABC Repair. ABC Repair outsourced the engine cradle replacement to Dickweed Shop aka DS. Car goes, takes forever because the first cradle they got was bent, so they had to order another one from California. Dude ordered the wrong parts originally. Dude gets the cradle in on the day my rental car coverage expires. As a single dad, I needed my car. Also, this whole time the manager of ABC Repair Shop was not keeping me up to date on any of this, was dodging my calls, and anytime I did get him, he was rude to me. So, guy bus rear to get it in that day, test drove and returned it to ABC Repair right before closing time, where I was waiting to pick it up. Dickweed Shop gave it a clean bill of health and handed over the keys. Here's where rude crap begins. So the minute I left ABC Shop that night, there was something wrong with the car. Since I have a bit of auto mechanic experience, I assumed it was a wheel bearing. Next morning I call my insurance adjuster, who tells me to take it back to Dickweed Shop and see what's up. So I call him up and say, hey, it's the dude with the engine cradle job, uh, I think there's something wrong with one of the bearings. Yeah, I knew about that. Uh, so why did you give it a clean bill of health? I was being rushed to return it, so I just said it was fine. It wasn't critical, so what's the big deal? Uh, okay, well, we need this fixed. Are you sure you know exactly what's wrong? 100% right rear wheel bearing. Okay, I'll call the adjuster and get it approved for repair. I have no more rental coverage, but I am going out of town this weekend and will not need my car Thursday to Sunday. I can drop it off then, does that work? Sure, no problem, see you Thursday morning. Dickweed Shop orders the bearing with insurance approval and all is well. I go in Thursday morning to drop off the car, and the conversation goes roughly as follows. Hey there, here's the keys. Now, if it's actually not what you think it is, or there's more, please call me right away. I'll call the insurance adjuster and get it approved since this is the only time I don't need my car for transporting my child. No worries, I'm positive it's what I think it is, but if not, I'll call. I head out of town. Have a great weekend. No call from Dickweed Shop. Monday morning comes around, and I am about to head out to pick up the car when I get a phone call from my adjuster. He tells me he just got off the phone with Dickweed Shop, and he was informed that no work was done on my car all weekend. I was livid. I asked why, and insurance adjuster said he didn't know head down there and talk to the guys myself, so I did. I walked into the shop and dinged the bell. He walked into the office and said, can I help you? As if he didn't even know who I was. Followed is the conversation. Yeah, insurance guy tells me you didn't touch my car. What the heck happened? Well, it was the right front, not the right rear bearing like I thought, so I couldn't do the work since the right front wasn't approved. But I asked you to call me if it wasn't what you thought it was, and you said you would, why didn't you call? Well, who's paying for this, you or insurance? That doesn't matter. I asked you to call so I could get it approved while I was out of town. Why didn't you call me? I don't have to answer you. It wasn't the approved work. I didn't do it. End of story. 
Why didn't you call? I could have gotten it approved. Like I said before, I left for out of town. Dickweed Shop turns around, grabs my keys off the counter behind him, hands them to me and says, take your keys, take your car, I'm done dealing with you. I walked out pissed and across the street to his manager's office and asked to talk to the manager. On vacation until Wednesday, I'd leave my number and ask manager to call me. In the meantime, I get the car to the original mechanic who starts bearing repairs on all four tires. Approved by insurance as a we're sorry for dickweed shop experience, he also noticed that dickweed shop used the wrong strut in my car when he replaced the engine cradle and didn't put the rivets back in the plastic wheel well liner, causing the tire to burn a hole through it, which insurance approved replacing both with the correct parts. Manager finally calls me at 4.45 p.m. on Wednesday after being busy doing payroll all day. So, do you know anything about why I'm calling you? No clue what's going on. Begins to explain what happened when I returned from out of town. Then state the strut was wrong and the liner was ruined. Interrupts me. He couldn't have ruined the liner by replacing the cradle. Oh, so you do know who I am. What actually happened? I never mentioned engine cradle replacement. Well, I'll apologize for wasting your time, but I don't know what else you want me to do. Sorry. He hangs up on me. The Revenge Remember that trip out of town? Well, on my return trip, I was bumped off my original flight, then bumped from that flight to the only one that finally took me home. I get on the plane, find my seat, put in my headphones and start to settle in. Now, mind you, I was out of town for a party, and I was wearing a themed onesie, a gentleman in a business suit sits down next to me. I'm naturally an outgoing person, so I strike up a conversation. Hey there, heading to destination for business or pleasure? Business, what do you do? I'm the regional vice president for ABC Repair Company. My eyes got huge. It was destiny. So I began to tell him my current experience up to me leaving for out of town the butthole manager at his shop, to the dickweed shop jerk they were subletting business to, VP was taking notes on my entire story. I swear his jaw was on the tray table. He was furious. He gave me his personal cell and email and told me he would be having a talk with the manager. He also had his company pay for five more days for a rental car since they ordered a used cradle and not a new one, which butthole manager decided didn't even ask my adjuster or me, which wasted five days. The next afternoon, after I pick up my car and had that experience, I got a call from VP. He wanted to make sure my car was fixed, and that he'd also found out there were more complaints about his manager who treated me poorly. The manager was hiding the complaints, and they never reached corporate, so he was fired. I then tell him about my experience that morning with the guy not doing any work on my car while I was gone. That pissed him off too. He said he would be in touch. After I talked to Dickweed Shop Manager on Wednesday, I called VP back and told him what happened. He said thank you for the information and hung up. About a month later, I had a question for VP not related to any of this, so I called him up and I learned that they stopped giving their work to Dickweed Shop. And when the owner of Dickweed Shop found out why, he fired both Dickweed Shop Mechanic and Dickweed Shop Manager. So that's my story. Hope y'all enjoyed. Moral, don't be a douchebag, be honest, and you won't get bit by karma. So I've got to be honest, I don't normally swear in these videos, but this is too good to pass up. Did you notice in the story when the guy meant to say assess that it was written as asses? Insurance guy asses the damage. I just imagine some guy rubbing his butt all over the car with a quizzical look on his face. Damn it, Larry, it's assess, not rub your ass all over it. No wonder that didn't make any sense. Now put your pants back on and pray that no one else saw you. Do me a quick favor, have a look down below the video. If that subscribe button's still red, it means you're not actually subscribed to the KCC channel. Please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories. Our next story today comes to us from Chip on my shoulder. Seriously upcharged a guy that upcharged my parents. Let's jump right in. My parents were renovating their house about a year ago and they needed an electrician to move some lighting fixtures. Generally, I have a friend that's my go-to electrician for stuff like this, but my parents had hired a guy to paint the living room and needed this done quickly. 
My electrician friend happened to be on vacation, so he wouldn't be able to get out to me until after the painter was already scheduled to come. After referring with a couple of other friends, they recommended an electrician. We are all from the same country and happen to emigrate to the same small town, so people within our culture generally recommend other people from that same country. The electrician comes by for a quote, I've never met this individual, and he tells my parents that it's all based on the amount of time it would take and that he can't give them an exact quote because he doesn't know how much time it's going to take until the job is already started. My parents think this sounds reasonable and end up hiring him. Just as an A-side, I installed Nest cameras for my parents in their living room and facing their front door, so we had a good view of the area where the job was being performed. This job takes him about an hour, and he literally sat on my couch on his phone for about five hours, watching TV, kicking his feet up, waiting for my mom to get home so that he could show her the work is complete, and charge her like six hours for a job that took him about an hour, which I confirmed how unprofessional his behavior was on my Nest Cam. My parents didn't want to cause any friction, so they paid him for the amount of time he charged them. I believe it was like $500 for something that should have really cost $150 or so. Anyway, the lighting fixtures were installed, he received his check and went on his merry way. My electrician friend later confirmed that this guy had seriously upcharged my parents. A few months later, I decided to take a side gig selling solar as a 1099 employee. I was making decent money at my existing job, but I had a wide enough network where I could help people around me with generally good solar deals and make some good money for myself on the side. The company I connected with would give me my price on panels, including installation, as well as on the roof if a roofing job was required. My price was extremely good, and the way I made my money was by tacking on the fee at my end, built into the roof price and the per watt price of the panels, plus installation. Much like my parents found the electrician, this same electrician who I had never met found me, inquiring about a roofing job. I told him that I don't do standalone roofs, but that I could package something for him, including solar, which would get rid of most of his electricity bill. He said he didn't have the money up front for the roof or the panels, which is fine because we can finance and it started to sound like he was a little bit desperate as his roof was leaking and he didn't have the capital to fix it. Generally, when I go to a client, I try to keep the price down and make it more desirable for the client. I'd rather make less money than no money, so I generally make around 3000 to 5000 per install, which is a win-win. When I got the call, I thought the guy's name was familiar, and sure enough, it was the electrician who had helped my parents and left a bad taste in my mouth. At this point, I knew he was desperate for a resolution to his roof issue, and I knew he barely spoke any English, so my word was going to be gold. I set up an appointment to go meet up with him in about a week. I knew that I was going to upcharge the crap out of him due to the language barrier he would have with other installers, his desperation, and the fact that he upcharged my parents. I got the price quote from the installer that said the roof would cost about $10,000 for a strip and re-roof. This was a really good quote as the house was a multi-family unit and I was expecting the quote to come to around $15,000. They also gave me the price on the solar panels, which would be around $15,000. So the price I was looking at for the project was $25,000. Generally, in a good situation like this, I might have called in $29,000 total, got him a spectacular deal, make a couple grand and called it a day. But I was thinking, F this guy. So I adjusted the cost of the roof to $19,000 and the price of the panels to $21,000 half expecting that I would eventually need to come down on the pricing at some point. I went over there to meet up with him, proposed his setup, told him how good the quality of the roofing job would be, which is accurate, and that the solar system would virtually wipe out his electricity bill and that I would get him set up with a 25-year loan to keep his monthly payment down. He agreed to this, was excited to get his roof done, and really didn't care much about the panels, but they were part of the bundle and on we went. Once everything was installed, I was paid out on my deal and went to cash my $15,000 check. I went to my parents' house and gave them $1,500 each and explained to them what had happened and how I stumbled upon a $15,000 commission check. 
Just so it's clear, there is nothing shady about what I did. It was way more expensive than it needed to be, and everything was disclosed to him properly. He just paid more than he would have had to, even if he simply shopped around. But at the end of the day, it's well within my rights to charge whatever I want, like it's within the rights of the customer to tell me to F off. A big chunk of what he paid is covered by incentives, but he still paid way more than typical. Moral of the story, especially for contractors, plumbers, electricians, and mechanics, don't F people, because you're more aware of how things work than they are in a particular field, because you might end up getting F'd later tenfold. Not the butthole, he deserved it. Oh wait, wrong subreddit. Um, OP, the big difference between you and this guy is you asked for and got a very good price and you delivered with a good service. He sat on the couch and committed fraud. Big difference. I love how you went back and paid restitution to your parents. That is absolutely admirable. Check out both OPs linked in the description down below. I thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow.